Assalamualaikum and good morning class. I hope everyone is well. Um, for today class, we're going to learn about alpha, beta, and gamma rays in 15 minutes. It is under chapter 8, radiation, subtopic 8.3, ionizing and non-ionizing radiation. Let's go to the next slide. So, for today's lesson, the learning outcomes are at the end of this lesson, students will be able to distinguish three types of ionizing radiation in radioactive decay. But before that, before I start my lesson, let's go through a recap. So, from the previous lesson, we have learned ionizing and non-ionizing radiation. Let's look at figure 8.8. When a radiation such as radioactive radiation passes to air and produces positive and negative ion, it is known as ionizing radiation. As we can see here, the alpha particle is passing to air molecules, and then those air molecules are ionized into positive and negative ions because of the alpha particle. Let's look at another figure. What is a non-ionizing radiation? Non-ionizing radiation refers to any type of electromagnetic radiation that does not carry enough energy to ionize an atomic molecule. An example of ionizing and non-ionizing radiation are as below. We can see from the figure 8.9 the electromagnetic spectrum and on the left hand side there is non-ionizing radiation which is very low frequency wave, radio, infrared, microwave, visible light and ultraviolet. While well, for the left hand side, we can see ionizing radiation, which is X ray, gamma ray, and high end energy ultraviolet. Okay, let's go to the next slide. For today's lesson, we are going to learn about the type of ionizing radiation. There are three types of ionizing radiation you need to know in this lesson, which is alpha, beta, and gamma. Now, let's look at the difference between the three types of ionizing radioactive radiation. We can see from the table below that for natural characteristic, alpha is helium nucleus. Helium nucleus contains two protons and two neutrons, while for beta radiation, it is a high-speed electron, and for gamma ray, it is electromagnetic wave. For the charge of particle, alpha has a positive charge sign, while beta has a negative charge sign, and gamma ray is neutral. For the ionizing power, alpha has high ionizing power, while beta has moderate ionizing power, and gamma has a low ionizing power. For the speed of the radiation, alpha has moved slowly. For beta radiation move very quickly and gamma Let's look at the difference in penetrating power between these three radiation. First, alpha radiation has a low penetrating power. For beta radiation has a moderate penetrating power and gamma ray has a high penetrating power. Because of their mass and charge, alpha particles are easily stopped by a piece of paper and even the top layer of your skin. The smaller beta particle can travel a bit further and can be stopped with a layer of aluminum. For gamma ray, it is a very different situation because it is a wave such as light and sound and has no mass and charge. In theory, a wave can travel forever in materials. Interaction with material is a chance process. Usually, a layer of lead or thick layer of concrete is used to reduce transmission to a reasonable level. So, does this mean we only need to be aware of gamma ray? Only looking at the penetrating ability, gamma ray might seem more dangerous because they can travel much further. 
this isn't always the case. The alpha particles are easily stopped doesn't mean they have less energy. It only means they lose their energy on a very short distance. When you ingest or inhale those particles, they can cause a lot of damage. A beta particle can also do a lot of damage when they are inside your body and also on the skin. For example, the eye, it will increase your risk of getting a cataract. A high energy gamma ray can easily enter your body, but it can also easily just exit your body. It usually causes less damage on its way. So it is not the radiation itself that makes it dangerous, it's just that alpha and beta particles are easily to shield than gamma ray. Now, let's look at the different interfection by electric field on these three different radiation. Charged particles are affected by electric field. An electric field is the area around a charged object. It forms a landscape for charged objects, rather like hills and valleys in the charged dimension. This makes charge accelerate as they move in a potential gradient. Just like a ball will accelerate if it roll down a hill. If two parallel plates, one negative and one positive, form an electric field, that particle from radioactive decay are made to travel through, the particle that are charged will accelerate toward the plate with opposite charge. For example, an alpha particle will therefore accelerate toward the negative plate and the beta particle will accelerate to it the positive plate. Well, the gamma ray has no charge, so it is not affected by this electric landscape and will just continue on its straight path. Now, let's look at another picture different from the previous one. Here, um, there is a description what is happening to the um, radioactive source. So as you can see, alpha is deflected towards the negative plate because alpha is a positively charged particle and while the gamma ray is moving straight forward without deflecting because gamma ray is not charged, it is neutral. While the beta particle is deflected towards the positive plate because beta particles are negatively charged. So remember, that alpha and beta will be deflected in the electric field and gamma, gamma ray will not be deflected. Now, let's look at the deflection by magnetic field for the three types of radiation. As you can see from the figure below, there is a magnet between the radioactive source. So there's a south part and there's a north part. And we can see that the alpha particle or the alpha radiation is deflected toward the south part. Well, the gamma ray is moving straight forward, not deflected, just like in the electric field. While the beta particle is deflected toward the north part. Let's look at another picture to clearly understand this. Now, in this figure, we can clearly see where the magnetic field is. Because these three radiation consists of charged particles, except for gamma ray, so beta and alpha radiation can be deflected by the magnetic field. Just as with electric field, gamma radiation is not deflected by the magnetic field. When alpha and beta particles move in magnetic field, they experience a deflection force, provided their motion is not parallel to the field. Again, due to higher momentum, the alpha particle is less affected by the force of the field than the beta particle is. Now, for the fun part, let's do some questions. I will give you a few minutes to do it yourself first and then we will discuss it together. Now, let's go through the question together. Question 1. The ionizing power of beta radiation is lower than the ionizing power of alpha 
but higher than the ionizing power of gamma ray. The second question, the penetration power or penetrating power of beta radiation is higher than the penetration power of alpha radiation but lower than the penetration of gamma ray. This gamma ray has the highest penetrating power. For the third one, the alpha radiation is positively charged, while the beta radiation is negatively charged, and gamma ray is neutral. For the last one, both alpha and beta can be deflected in the magnetic and electric field, while the gamma ray will not be deflected. Okay, now let's go through summary. Now let's go through the summary. So, for the first one, alpha radiation. Example of natural characteristic of alpha radiation is helium nucleus. Helium nucleus has two protons and two neutrons. Then, the charge for alpha radiation is positively charged. So, the, the ionizing power for alpha radiation is high ionizing power. Now, the speed of alpha radiation is which one? Slowly, very quickly, at the speed of light? Slowly. So, for the penetrating power of alpha radiation, so, there's a clue here, can be blocked by a sheet of paper, so meaning it has low penetrating power. Well, for the deflection in electric field, since alpha is positively charged, it will be attracted to negative plate. So, the deflection in magnetic field can or cannot be deflected. It can be deflected. Now, for beta radiation, natural characteristic is high speed electron. Beta radiation is negatively charged. So, ionizing power for beta radiation is if alpha is high, beta is moderate. So, beta radiation speed is very quickly beta radiation has low high or highest can be blocked by a thin aluminium so meaning it has high penetrating power so now deflection in electric field can better be deflected it can be deflected so since since it is negatively charged so it will be attracted to positively charged the positively charged thing so can beta radiation be deflected in magnetic field can or cannot it can be deflected now let's go through gamma ray natural characteristic for gamma ray is electromagnetic wave so gamma ray is what charge is it it is naturally charged it is neutral not naturally charged, it is natural, okay? So, gamma ray has what ionizing power? Is it high, moderate, or low? It is low ionizing power. So, gamma ray, what speed does it move? Is it slowly, very quickly? It move at the speed of light? Yes, it move at the speed of light. And now, penetrating power. Alpha has a low penetrating power. Beta has a high penetrating power. Meaning, gamma ray has the highest penetrating power and can be blocked by a thick lead or a thick concrete. Now, deflection in electric field not affected by electric charge because it is neutral. And now, in the deflection in magnetic field, Feel, can be can it be deflected or not? Can or cannot? Cannot be deflected. This is our summary. 
um, let's look at the next slide, which is this, the final slide. So, this is um, the final slide, which is the end of our lesson. This is the answer we have answered in the previous slide. And thank you for today, everyone.